Hey folks, I am going to walk you through the third and final uh, HDA, the Houdini Digital Asset that I have created recently, um, and uh, walk you through it. So uh, this one is for generating rocks, um, and it is uh, set up to work on scattered points. So it's going to generate some uh, rock varieties. So you set the number that you want. Um, it's going to automatically start generating things uh, when when it comes uh, when you place it down. So if you want it to not do that, then just press escape and cancel that and set it up first. So for me, just to show everything, I'm going to reduce the count to three, um, and it'll you know try to cook again. Um, I'm going to reduce the sharpness, and because both of these, the sharpness and the mesh density, lower numbers are going to be more sharp and more dense. So uh, colorize is just gonna set a random color on them for visualization. And uh, for now, we're gonna leave edge damage and edge color off. Um, so let's, uh, let's first just scatter some points on a grid so we can see what, uh, what's going on. What the heck? Okay, um, Okay. so in here we have a grid with some points scattered on it and we don't need to feed in any other attributes, just scattered points. And then uh, we can see our rock generator has generated some rocks here um, and they're, you know, they're pretty round and uh, 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 uniform right now. Um, so and we have only three varieties, but if we turn on random orientation, that'll help us just randomize uh, things, and then we can randomize p scale as well. By default, um, there is some uh, there is some uh, bex that is trying to help keep these pushed apart. As uh, you know. To, like doing a pretty good job of keeping these pushed apart. There's some intersections you can see, but relatively few. If you turn on randomized p-scale, uh, that will kind of stop working. So depending on how much you uh, change the, um, depending on how much you change the p-scale, um, it can, you know, obviously it can create tons of intersections. And obviously as we scale this number up, we're going to get a lot of intersections, right? So um, one thing that uh, I built into the HDA2 is a deintersect function. So once you know you have your scale set up the way you want it to, just turn on deintersect, and then you'll have to wait for it to cook, and then you'll see um, all of these are no longer intersecting. So you can kind of do that um, once you're happy with kind of how things look. We can turn that back off for now. Um, and if we want to have uh, a little bit sharper edges, we just need to bring this down and it will have to recook. Um, so just know that most of the things that you're going to change are going to need a quick recook. Um, and uh, let's turn on edge damage. That will need to recook as well. Um, and you'll see that we're going to get some. Um, some edge damage procedurally. Uh, this is probably the longest one to to cook, but then you can see, you know, along these edges, we have some uh, some nice damage that is happening from the lab's edge damage node. And same thing with the edge color. Um, we'll turn off uh, the edge damage. Turn on edge color. And that, uh, let me turn off colorize. Okay, so that will, I believe, get stored out as a mask attribute. Um, so the way edge color works is it's stored as a mask attribute. So to access it, we would you would need to unpack the geometry. So if we unpack it, you can see we've got UVs um, and everything, and we've also got a mask attribute. So this is the mask on the edges. Um, to, you know, you'd probably primarily use this for shading, um, and 
yeah, so if you want to use the mask attribute, you'll have to unpack them, which is, you know, uh, a bummer, but I couldn't, uh, I couldn't figure out how to get them, get the mask attribute on there, uh, packed in. So, um, yeah, you can use the random color for shading as well. And that's on the, that's a packed, um, a packed point attribute. Um, so, uh, okay. So we've gone over most of these functions and the deintersect. And so if you have them deintersected, um, then they're pretty much ready to go into a, uh, into an RBD sim. So let's feed this into an RBD bullet solver. And uh, let's add a ground plane and transform these up a little bit so they're not intersecting it initially. And then uh, let's just see, it's gonna import the data and then yeah, it should work, you know, work fine and not have to do a bunch of like initial uh, calculations for solving for those intersections. So it should be pretty well set up for RBD and uh, or just scattering, you know, very uh, a, a very uh, a variety of rocks um, on a surface. Um, and yeah, that is basically how it works. Um, and you can change, uh, here, let me turn this off, go back up here. You can change the seed for the orientation. You can change the seed for the uh, P scale. And yeah, that is most of everything, I think. So yeah, uh, if this is helpful. It's also really useful to just, uh, you know, you could use this on a, uh, on like a grain sim, you could you could just plug a grain sim um, or or a pop a pop sim in here. Let me quick really quickly set something up here, um, and uh, have the uh, points have the rocks be instanced on the points. So yeah, you see, you can, you could have that instanced on points in a pop sim or a pop screen sim, um, and you know, there's all kinds of uses for this. So um, I hope you find this helpful. Again, let me know if there's any problems you run into with it, and I'll try to make updates. Um, and yeah, this will be free for all my patrons. Um, and yeah, hope it's useful. Bye.